this opportunity to share what I've done uh, in Seoul. Uh, actually, I uh, I got my PhD degree here, you know, at USC in 2003. Then after that, I was teaching at um, first at you know University of Alabama. So I kind of changed from LA to Tuscaloosa, <laughs> <laughs> and then actually I also uh, taught at University of Iowa, Iowa City. And then actually, you know, it's, it's been only six years. I, you know, since I went back to uh, Seoul, Korea, uh, and then uh, since then, I've been working on. Actually, even though I was born there and then I grew up there in Seoul, um, actually, I, I kind of consider uh, the past six years as of my own time uh, to enjoy learning new aspects of the city. So now, actually, I'm trying to see the city from. Much more like you know theoretical, you know, new theoretical perspective I have developed. So uh, actually, it, it's been really exciting, mm -hmm. and then also you know, I'm ha happy to uh, take you know take this you know have this time to share what, what I have found, and what, what I have learned uh, in Seoul, which I thought really familiar, but actually I found a lot of strange things. <laughs> so, okay. but anyway. Um, so basically, um, you know, as you uh, you can guess, I'm 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 going to talk about one city, you know, Seoul, which is a little little bit different than you know, Lansing, uh, and also you know, larger miles miles away from here. Um, so actually, here, um, you know, if you look at the background of this slide, actually you see a kind of contour, uh, you know, of the city. So you see you know, there's a, you know the, the river running through the city. And uh, that really divide the city into two parts, you know, north of the river and the south of the river. And then we usually call this south of the river as a Gangnam, you know, Gangnam style. style. Oh, Gangnam. Yeah, so mm -hmm. this area is Gangnam. Uh, actually, you know, this map uh, is based on, you know, guess what? The tweets from the, you know, the residents of the city uh, uh, actually a few years ago. The reason why I show this, uh, this map based on tweet. Um, is that uh, actually uh, what I'm what I'm going to talk about today is kind of you know about how new media technologies are really embedded in you know individuals' lives in Seoul, okay? Um, rather than just talking about the impact of you know communication technology on individuals and communities, and I really want to try to uh, you know. Um, you know, talk about kind of the perspective uh, about how technology is really incorporated into you know individual lives and also you know communities and neighborhoods uh, in Seoul. And so basically, first I'm going to talk a little bit about you know the context, you know the city itself, you know what's going on in in Seoul in terms of uh, uh, you know community, you know local community uh, development. And then also I'm going to uh, talk about you know theory uh, that I'm, I have been using to analyze. Uh, lots of data from you know Seoul, which is you know actually communication infrastructure theory that I'm going to um, uh, spend a little time you know explaining what that is, and then um, after that I'm going to share some of the empirical uh, findings. Uh, so actually, I have two uh, two studies, but you know depends on how much time I'm going to uh, have. Probably I'm going to just talk about one study, but if I have still time, uh, you know. Time to cover, uh, so I'm going to also talk about the you know, second study too. Okay, um, so this is Seoul. Uh, I don't know whether you have been in Seoul or not. Uh, actually, we are looking at the old downtown area. Oh, nice picture. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice screen, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the old downtown area. And then actually, Seoul is, is a city of mountains. There are lots of mountains and small and big. And here, this is a, you know, a mountain we call the Namsan. And also, there's a tower on the top of mount, you know, the mountain uh, that we call the you know, Namsan Tower, which is, has been quite a you know, symbolic landmark, uh, probably most popular, you know, the most important landmark in Seoul. Okay, um, so just a little bit of you know, geography class stuff. And Seoul is, based, you know, is composed of 25 uh, municipal districts. And each district uh, has its own mayor, uh, the elected mayor. And this district is called Gu. So every you know, name has Gu, uh, the last, last part of it. And then, uh, so what's the typical scene of neighborhood uh, in Seoul? Uh, because I'm going to talk about neighborhood and local community uh, today. So is it something like this? 
Unfortunately not. <laughs> so even though you know, I really wish I live in this kind of a really beautiful uh, you know, neighborhood with a lot of traditional houses and you know, really peaceful you know, alley like this, uh, but actually, uh, sadly, this is the reality. <laughs> so most of people, the majority of people uh, you know, in Seoul live in this kind of you know, you know, box, basically, um, that we call apartment. This is how we pronounce apartment. Mm. Okay? Um, so actually, this is quite a symbol of you know, modernization and you know, urbanization you know, in Korea. Actually, uh, this kind of you know, residence uh, has been around for about you know, the last 50 years, since you know, late 1950s. So in, 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 in the area that we call Gangnam, uh, actually, if you want to buy an apartment with uh, about 2,000 square feet, it, it's like a million dollars or so. The people like me, <laughs> we, we can afford to it. So anyway, um, so you know, let me talk a little bit about you know, history. So in Korea, um, actually, the we you know in the first uh, first half of the 20th century, um, it also really actually we went through a lot of tragic events, including you know Japanese colonization period for 30, more than 35 years, and then right after that, uh, you know, of course, we had you know. Terrible, terrible war, Korean War. So after the war ended in you know, 1953, uh, actually there's nothing much left but ashes. So actually the, uh, the country uh, had to start almost from scratch. Um, well, actually, um, we, you know, Korean people did a good job in you know, doing something to fix it. Uh, so in the, in the second half of the century, uh, could be characterized as a really rapid and radical you know, modernization and industrialization, and of course, you know, urbanization. So, how radical and how uh, uh, how you know rapid? Uh, in terms of urbanization, you know, back in 1960s, there were only 32 percent of people, uh, the total population, living in urban area. But now, uh, as you know, as of 2012, 92 percent uh, of the total population live in urban areas. So, so, actually, you know, these people live in only 16 percent of the land, because I think we have full of mountains. So actually, libel land is only 60%. So anyway, so um, so then what's the combination? If you look at the you know, whole you know, 20th century, so what's the, what could be a combina you know, the consequence of this you know, combination of you know, colonization and the war, and then you know, urbanization, modernization, and industrialization. So actually, we, you know, Korea uh, experienced all of these things in probably 70 years, 80 years. Okay, so what, there are so many things uh, you know, that we can consider as consequence of this radical you know, transformation of the country, especially transformation of the city, Seoul. Uh, I think pro one of the consequences that I want to focus on today is kind of disappear disappearance of neighborhood. So simply because if people were uprooted from their own places, and then you know, actually we have lost traditions, and then you know, a lot of things that we have had you know, before, the, especially before the you know, you know, you know, colonization period. So basically, we have lost the neighbors and neighborhoods. Okay? So that was the reality, that was the consequence. So people you know, cocooned in their tiny little boxes that I showed to you, apart, right? Uh, so people are simply disconnected from other people uh, in next doors in the, in the same building. So I usually, you know, joked, uh, you know, joked uh, about, you know, this situation by asking, where are the ends of the earth in Seoul? Where are the ends of the, uh, the earth in Seoul? Maybe Lansing? <laughs> 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 well, actually, uh, the, the ends of the earth in Seoul is in the next door, in the, in the same apartment the building. There is okay? no earth in Seoul, just concrete. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so maybe, uh, yeah. So um, why? It's simply you know now in, in this you know uh, you know so most of people in Seoul have enjoyed the uh, you know probably the fastest and the most powerful IT you know infrastructure, so they can easily connect to everyone you know everywhere. So in this you know in the hyper connectivity city, so so people are probably one of the most difficult things to do is knock on the door in the next door and then you know try to meet people and then you know greet each other and then talk with uh, with them about what's happening in their you know uh, you know communities and then uh, maybe even going further maybe you know they can do something together 
to solve their common problems. This is some simply impossible. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, um, so that's why I call you call you know the end of the earth exists in the next door, and so. Okay, but recently we have written this little bit of changes. Okay, not not a big change, but still a meaningful change. Uh, I would say. Um, so there have been actually various interesting attempts. Uh, mostly led by the residents themselves to rediscover and recover and redevelop in you know, the neighborhoods in many different parts of uh, uh, Seoul, probably since you know mid 1990s. Okay, so this is one example uh, of you know people, you know the residents attempt to uh, rediscover in the neighborhood. So uh, we have actually did lots of interesting uh, you know project uh, to develop uh, and publish. And also make uh, you know community media, including you know small you know little type of you know uh, the print media to uh, you know podcast radio. So actually you know for the last three or four years, I have um, tried to you know to meet these people who have been working on you know developing you know community media. Actually, this is a um, you know podcast radio station uh, led by you know this young lady. Um, Work, serving one of the uh, you know uh, the working class uh, the neighborhoods in Seoul. Okay, so actually they have a lot of interesting stories, but you know for the time's sake, uh, I just want to show this picture. And also there are other kinds of you know uh, community media, uh, you know the, uh, the outlets, and then also you know churches and you know schools, and there are a lot of different kinds of you know community organizations. Actually, they are trying to be much more engaged with their local communities. Actually, in the past, even though there are churches and schools and other, you know, you know, you know sports and, you know, uh, cultural and, uh, you know, political organizations in physically in the neighborhood, but actually they are not really engaged with, you know, in their own places. But actually there have been recently many interesting attempts to, uh, you know, for these organizations to get much more involved in, you know, uh, local communities. And then also uh, there have been many you know, grassroots, you know, again, the regional to led uh, project to build the spaces for neighbors to meet together. Actually, one of the interesting things is that I, I know, you know, in New York City and DC, a lot of you know, urban farming projects going on. Uh, but here, because we have, a, you, know, uh, you, know, you know, Seoul is really dense and we, we don't have much land available for you know, urban farming. So actually people try to use, you know, uh, uh, the rooftop of the you know, apartment buildings, and then they just try to, uh, you know, you know, have a lot of different kinds of, you know, um, uh, the things in there. Actually, there, actually, people start meeting other people who live in the same building, mm -hmm. okay? Because I think now they are doing the same thing, right? The raising, you know, plants and other, you know, other things, other food. So now people, you know, I think, use that as a space for uh, starting conversation with other people. So, probably maybe the one of the most interesting case uh, in this regard is a neighborhood called Songmisan Mao. So here, um, actually, Mao literally means village. So Songmisan, uh, this Mao, uh, you know, this uh, place is a kind of western part of Seoul, and the Songmisan also means uh, it actually point to this mountain because San in Korean is mountain. Okay. So actually, you know. This neighborhood is, is kind of you know, surrounding this, you know, the mountain, Songmisan. So we call that in Songmisan Mahal. Um, because I think this Mahal was first you know, built uh, in uh, probably mid 1990s by first in you know, a small group of, group of you know, uh, the families. But now actually se about 700 uh, families are connected uh, together to, uh, uh, as a neighborhood community. Okay. So basically it's a network based but still sharing the same uh, uh, same place. Okay. So basically you know this, this is actually the map you know the people in, in the community drew. So basically they built their own schools and then uh, they, they built their own you know daycare uh, centers and then also a lot of you know, their bookstores and you know cafes. So there's and also in co-op you know stores there are so many, you know, uh, spaces and places where people can meet together, and then now, you know, start 
you know, having conversation uh, about what's happening in their local communities, and then they can share some of the problems and issues, and then they also do you know, try to do something together, kind of you know, as a collective action in in, uh, in their neighborhood. And then here, oh, this is actually co-housing. So actually, they have so far they have built four co-housing spaces. You know, I think in here. Nine different families, you know, actually they designed the building together and then they live together. Okay, <coughs> so there's so many uh, interesting things going on. Not only, you know, Songmisan Mall, there are other places that sh actually Songmisan is probably uh, the big, uh, they do this, you know, the biggest scale, but there are also other places who you know, try to do similar things. Okay, but except for <laughs> Gangnam, <laughs> so um. So probably you know they are already rich, <laughs> so and they really, um, you know, a lot of people live in a really expensive you know you know high rising apartment buildings. So, so they already have their own communities, right? Probably we can call, even call you know very stylish communities. But so probably they don't really need to do these kind of things. But mostly if, if you can see, you know, the North of the River. Okay. Anyway, so this is you know something uh, that's happening uh, <laughs> here. Let's see. The size. Uh, so, what are the factors uh, that are responsible for uh, these? Again, the small changes, but you know, meaningful changes. But first of all, you know, we need to think about some of the you know, political factor. So now, you know, the the, the mayor of you know the Seoul metropolitan city, uh, Mr. You know, uh, Wonsung Park. Uh, he he used to be uh, actually a civil rights uh, human rights lawyer. So actually, he. He got some idea about you know you know neighbor, you know urban neighborhood and then he really tried to put that as one of the top priority uh, agenda and you know, policy. And but you know other than that, actually we can also you know uh, uh, look, have to look at you know social factor because you know most of these you know neighborhood revitalization movement in different parts of Seoul uh, are led by the people in their 40s and early 50s. Actually, these people are products of uh, you know uh, 80s of Korea, which was you know period of you know pro democracy, really harsh you know uh, pro democracy movement. Um, actually, I'm, I'm one of them. <laughs> so you know because not only just they just participate in a pro democracy movement. Actually, they got what they wanted. You know what I mean? They got surrender from the uh, you know back then you know, really authoritarian you know governments. So because of this, they have really high level collective efficacy. So they, you know, these generations share the kind of sense that, you know, if we have something to do, we can do it kind of spirit, okay? Mm -hmm. Now actually they put this kind of, you know, efficacy and energy into their neighbor and the neighborhood. I think that's kind of, that's one of the things that we need to consider as, as a, you know, factor that's responsible for this kind of, you know, small change in you know, different you know, neighborhoods. But you know, here uh, one thing that we, we cannot ignore is a you know technological um, factor. Um, actually, which is I'm I'm going to focus on today. So again, I think there are so many interesting you know technological development, especially you know place based uh, technologies. So, you know, people know each other and then you know kind of, kind of detect other people through these you know these technologies. So by using you know these technologies, actually there have been a lot of interesting you know, uh, um, you know uh, kind of experiments for different you know neighbors to use you know these technologies to uh, as a way to find other neighbors and then you know talk with them and then you know do something together. Okay. So you know. Um, so you know, these are kind of you know the factors that we can. Uh, consider. Mm -hmm. So as you know, you know, there are you know, different views uh, about the you know, kinds of impact you know, communication technologies can have on you know, uh, local communities. So we know that there are the people who sh have shown you know, more pessimistic views about this, you know, technology will uh, you know, destroy you know, our communities and then we, so, you know, make people more, much more selfish and you know, something like that. But also, we know that there are more, you know, optimistic views about this. You know, I think, you know, with all of these, you know, the buzzwords that we have heard and maybe probably we have been using these days, uh, basically a lot of people, I think, would think that, you know, because of technology, so we are becoming better people, right? Willingly share what we have, 
Okay, so we all go to heaven together <laughs> with this, you know, these technologies. I think that 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 this kind of you know uh, sensibility have been developed. Okay, so there are some optimistic view about this in the context of in you know, a local neighborhood. So there are there are some views uh, talking about kind of you know uh, the pushing effect of technologies. So these new technologies in social media, in a smartphone, and all the, those you know you know technologies that we have, we have been uh, looking at. They really push individuals, push uh, residents, or their attention away from their own places. Okay, so they are easily connect to other people a thousand miles away, but never don't care. You know, they don't care about what's happening in their local neighborhood. I think we can call it you know pushing effect of technologies. But also at the same time, actually this is a, something that I I've been uh, looking at. You know, same technologies also have uh, have a potential to show you know pulling effect. Okay, so people can use this you know social media and you know smartphone and other technologies uh, to find other neighbors and then talk with them and then you know, do something together. So actually, it really pull you know individual residents to their own places. So showing you know, pulling effect. So which effect would you buy? Okay. Um, so actually, uh, I'm trying to uh, develop kind of you know third way <laughs> view, okay. So rather than you know um, going to you know you know pushing effect view or you know pulling effect view, maybe you know I, I think it all depends, okay. So here I, I call that is conditional effect. So okay, so I think we have to find the something after if. So what are the conditions, okay? So if a social media, same social media, it, it could be Facebook or Twitter or actually Kakao Talk in Korea, it could actually it, it can show pulling effect in some some, some uh, circumstances, and also it can also have you know you know pushing effect in other uh, other situations. What uh, actually we, we have to find the conditions, okay? So that's kind of work that I have been uh, working on, and then. Um, so here, I want to share some of the you know uh, research findings that I uh, actually uh, report in uh, recent one of the recent papers in, in community research. So basically, here um, uh, we wanted to see whether you know SNS use you know either promote or de de uh, detract uh, local community engagement amongst all residents in their neighborhood. So you know <coughs> between these two uh, two uh, you know scenarios, what's the real scenario in Seoul? Okay. Uh, basically, as I said before, actually our real attempt is to try to find the condition, okay, for that. So you know, as a, a way to you know find out you know the conditions, okay, to determine whether you know SNS use will have a pushing effect or pulling effect, uh, I you know use the theory, uh, which is you know actually I um, I've developed with you know my advisor Sandra Bolokic. Um, communication infrastructure theory okay so because you know uh, this theory really uh, uh, gave us you know kind of you know guide uh, our, you know you know attempt to find the you know conditions uh, for you know technological impact let me just talk a little bit about you know what this theory really talking about okay so communication infrastructure theory uh, or CIT has been developed to explain how communication, uh, how community-based communication uh, resources function as the critical infrastructure for uh, having or uh, in developing and maintaining you know, local communities. Okay. So the most basic claim of CIT is that a strong communication infrastructure is the most important condition for urban neighborhood with a, a strong sense of belonging and high-level collective efficacy. And also uh, uh, high-level community engagement among uh, residents. Okay. Then, what is communication infrastructure? This is how we define you know communication infrastructure. So, communication infrastructure is a neighborhood storytelling network set in its communication action context. So, as you see here, actually it's composed of two parts. The first is a network of a, uh, you know neighborhood-level agent who are responsible for you know produce and share and use community stories okay that we call you know community storytellers and they have to form a network among themselves so that's one part of the you know, communication infrastructure so 
to have a strong communication infrastructure in a certain place, there should be a really active you know, community storytellers working together to form a network. Okay? So that's one idea of, in this definition. But these you know, storytellers don't work in a vacuum. So also we have to you know, consider you know, kind of ecological environments okay, e that either facilitate or impede forming you know, a uh, uh, you know, storytelling network in a sort of place. That we call in you know, a communication action context. Okay, so probably if you look at you know this diagram, uh, I hope you know uh, you have a little better understanding of uh, about what I'm trying to say here. So there are you know some you know important you know uh, you know community agents who um, who have potential to be a community storytellers. Okay, so, so actually we have uh, identified three important key. Uh, you know, community actors who have the potential to, uh, you know, participate in this kind of community storytelling process. First, of course, you know, residents. So residents have to tell stories about, you know, other people, with other people, about what, what's happening in their neighborhood, in their local communities. And also, you know, the media have to do this, right? So actually, uh, when I was in, you know, uh, Tuscaloosa, University, University of Alabama, uh, we had a Tuscaloosa News as a local media. Actually, you know, this, this paper is owned by New York Times. Um, but it's, because you know they have a lot of budget issues, so actually they're kind of a cut a lot of you know uh, the journalists. So usually most of the stories are actually purchased by New York Times. So actually sometimes we 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 joked about this. And actually, you know, if when we read the Tuscaloosa News, we are learning more about Manhattan, what's happening in Manhattan rather than Tuscaloosa, right? <laughs> So we, we have lost, you know, people in Tuscaloosa have lost really important, you know, actor who have to uh, play this role of community storytelling because of this, okay? But I think this is not only a you know, problem of Tuscaloosa, actually. We, we have been hearing this kind of story in many different places, including Seoul. And also, there are a lot of, you know, different kinds of the community organizations, you know, who have to also do these kind of things. Uh, job of you know producing and sharing and using you know, community storytellers and then like I said you know they have to form a network uh, and then we call it uh, you know, neighborhood storytelling network okay so if this network really you know well formed and then well you know the working then we can say that you know this community have a really important you know component of the communication infrastructure and then here uh, we can also think about all different kinds of you know ecological you know the elements, inclu including a lot of different, different kinds of you know resources, economic, cultural, and uh, you know, political political resources, and then also even you know safety, you know street safety and transportation and public space and schools, you know social control, and then even you know reputation and history. All of these elements uh, actually either facilitate <coughs> or impede in the form in the formation of you know storytelling network. So this is the communication infrastructure, and then we also have uh, have developed uh, uh, one new concept that really differentiate individuals in you know certain you know neighborhood in terms of whether they have a you know a strong connection to uh, the you know community based resources, okay, that we call you know, communication infrastructure, which is you know integrated connectedness to storytelling network or ICSM, okay. So if you happen to live in a community with a really you know, rich and strong you know, communication infrastructure, probably you, you're more likely to have high level ICSM than other people who, live, who happen to live in a community with a very weak communication infrastructure. But even in the same community, we can see some you know, interesting variants. Okay? So there are some people, even in the same community, that are much more uh, strongly connected to you know, community-based resources to tell stories about, you know, co their communities, okay? Then probably these people will have a you know, high level you know, ICSN and others. And then uh, we have, you know, for probably more than 10 years, we have you know, extensive research uh, about the effect of this ICSN. And then we found that, you know, people with, you know, high, uh, high ICSN, they are more likely to have, you know, high level in sense of belonging <coughs> and then high level, you know, collective advocacy. And then also they are more willing to participate in different kinds of you know, community activities. Okay. 
And then um, I also try to you know apply this you know CIT idea to uh, you know communication technology uh, domain. So these are kinds of you know propositions that I have developed so far based on uh, my you know, past research uh, of you know CIT. So first, uh, new media technology must be part of you know communication, <coughs> uh, part of the communication infra <coughs> infrastructure of a community to function as a facilitator of community involvement. So actually, and, and, and let me just you know, get a you know, second one, and then probably come back. If new media technology does not work as part of the communication infrastructure of a community, it can be a detracting factor. That means if the same technology could have both pushing effect and pulling effect, right? But there, one, one condition is whether, you know, it depends on whether it is really incorporated into, you know, uh, communication infrastructure. So it really, you know, I talked about, you know, integrated network of community storytellers. So social media, if, you know, for example, if a social media is really integrated in this, you know, storytelling process as part of, you know, communication infrastructure, it will show pulling effect rather than pushing effect, okay? And, but you know, this you know, same technology so, or same services, social, social media, fail to be in, incorporated into a storytelling process in a certain place, probably it's gonna show it, you know, much more likely you know, you know, pushing effect rather than you know, pulling effect, okay? So that's the basic idea of the you know, first two propositions. So in you know, the third one, whether new media technology will, uh, will be incorporated into communication infrastructure of local civic engagement, depends on the existing quality and strength of the community storytelling network, okay? And then, you know, at the individual level, if we apply that at the individual level phenomena, the use of new media by residents will have positive effect on local community engagement when the residents have a high level ICSM, okay? So, you know, it's even the same technology will have, diff, you know, contrasting effect on individuals depends on whether they have a high level, high or low level ICSM. So here, uh, based on that, uh, you know, CIT really proposed that individuals with high, higher ICSM, uh, they will be more likely to have a you know, pulling effect uh, compared to you know, pushing effect. So in this, in this you know, particular uh, study in you know, communication research, uh, actually we looked at you know, SNS use, the effect of SNS use on individuals' uh, willingness to you know, participate in you know, community activities. So uh, for that, actually we, we uh, uh, rather than using you know other measures, actually we have developed uh, you know, SNS dependence measure based on you know media system dependency idea. Uh, I don't know whether you are familiar with that, but you know I don't have time to um, you know take time too much time you know, explaining this. But actually, bas basically, SNS dependency measure uh, it try to capture uh, the relationship in which the capacity of individuals to attain their goals uh, is con contingent on the capacities of SNS to create gather process and disseminate information. So basically it's a multi, multi-dimensional measure uh, of the relationship between SNS and individuals. So basically if you are high on SNS dependency, so it's not about you know, SNS addiction. It's more like uh, how central SNS has become in your life. Okay? So anyway, so uh, uh, it, it's composed of seven dimensions uh, with you know, 21 items. So uh, the research question uh, and you know hypothesis uh, were like this. Uh, the research question was: uh, Does SNS dependency promote community engagement? And then you know first the hypothesis was that ICSN is a positive factor in local community engagement. And then uh, the second one is the impact of SNS dependency on community engagement is moderated by ICSN which means that there will be a positive relationship between SNS dependency and community engagement with a condition of high SSN and the negative or no relationship between the, uh, the two, SNS dependency and community engagement with a condition of a low SSN. Okay? Are you following me? Yeah. Okay, uh, data were collected in 2013, so we, uh, we had a, a you know, sample size was you know, 890. Uh, they are all in SNS users. And then, um, so basically, the you know, um, major predictors were SNS dependency that I uh, explained to you very briefly. And then ICSN, 
Well, so actually it's based on, you know, uh, people's connect connection to local media and then also their participation in interpersonal uh, talk with other people about uh, their communities and then also their, uh, the scope of connection to community organizations, okay? And then outcome, so we looked at four different, uh, you know, community engagement variables, so, you know, from neighborhood belonging and then, you know, two dimensions of the collective efficacy. Um, one is informed, you know, social control. So in, 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 informal social control is basically, um, you know, people's confidence in other neighbors in terms of whether they, they are going to, you know, participate in any kind of, you know, pro, you know neighborhood level problem solving activities. Okay? So it's more like a perceived trust in other people, other people's uh, <coughs> willingness to participate in the local, you know, community problem solving activities. And the social cohesion is uh, people's perception about how people are connected to each other in their neighborhood. Okay? And then uh, also we uh, measure uh, people's uh, you know, past experience of you know, participating in different kinds of you know, community activities. Okay, um, actually ICCN is, uh, was calculated based on this formula. Basically this is a uh, you know, summation of you know, three interaction terms of you know, uh, people's connection to three important you know, community storytellers, local you know, media, and other residents, and then you know, community organizations. Okay, findings. Um, so we found that you know, people's SNS dependency have positive impact on all of the community engagement variables that we had in this study. Okay? So they were positive, but actually not that strong. But really, you know, uh, moderate level, probably even below moderate level, you know, positive effect on for you know, community engagement variables. But ICSN, people, you know, integrated connectedness to you know, community storytelling network variable, it showed much stronger effect on you know, community engagement uh, variables. Okay? So probably you know, what uh, most interesting uh, hypothesis we had was the kind of interaction effect of SNS dependency and ICSN. Um, we found two significant uh, findings uh, for uh, two dimensions of you know, collective efficacy uh, variables. Uh, here, actually, we, we predicted that there is an opposite type of you know, uh, the relationship. Depends on you know, the level of the ICSN. So we predict that you know, people with high, higher uh, ICSN, there's a positive relationship between you know, community engagement variable and SNS dependency. But among those people, low ICSN, Actually, we pre predicted a, a negative relationship between SNS dependency and you know, community engagement, so showing kind of pulling it, you know, pushing effect for those people. But actually, we found that uh, that um, you know we didn't find a negative effect of, of you know, SNS dependency on community engagement among those people low ICSN with low ICSN. But you know, both actually show kind of in a positive, um, but it's almost uh, I think very close to zero. So probably no relationship, but we found the positive effect of SNS dependency on, you know, especially in this case, informal social control, only among those people, you know, high ICSM. Okay, and then, uh, you know, similar results for, uh, you know, social cohesion. But even though it, you know they were not, you know, significant, actually we found a similar pattern for neighborhood belonging and then also in you know, community engagement, you know, community participation variable. So what they mean is, you know, uh, so basically I can summarize those findings like this. SNS have a potential to be a facilitating factor because we, we still found a you know, you know, significant positive effect on uh, community engagement variables. But I say SNS was a much stronger uh, factor. So if people are connected to community level, you know, communication resources, they are more likely to use, you know, these new media technologies to even increase more their connection to, you know, local neighborhood. Okay, that's kind of story that we, we got you know, from uh, these findings. And then we've also found that, you know, positive impact of ICSN on community engagement were stronger among those with higher ICSN than those with lower ICSN. So what the mean is, you know, you know, this. What you know, these findings imply is that there should be more effort to you know, strengthen you know, community you know, storytelling agents, including community organizations, local media, and then also residents. Okay? Their capacity to 
you know, produce, and then capacity to share you know, local stories with other you know, neighborhood uh, agents, and then build a network among them are needed to make you know, you know, SNS and other uh, you know, new media technologies uh, more beneficial uh, for community engagement. Okay? So basically, you know, all of these things um, you know, are saying that so actually, you know, when we look at the impact of you know, communication technologies, so we, we don't want to only look at the you know, technology itself, is, itself. Actually, we have to probably spend you know, much more energy to look at conditions of the context where you know, these technologies are being incorporated into. I think you know, uh, the result of these studies uh, really um, uh, you know, confirm you know, this kind of uh, conclusion.